So exams have been cancelled again, but unfortunately that doesn't mean that you can just sit back and relax this school year. Teachers are still going to assess you using a variety of different ways, so you are going to have to revise for your school's assessments over the Easter break. The idea of being assessed by your teachers might feel a bit daunting, so we've compiled some do's and don'ts for your revision this Easter. Hopefully they'll help you work smarter rather than harder during the break so you can get the grade that you deserve this summer. 1. Avoid passive learning. Passive learning involves sitting back and trying to absorb information being presented to you rather than actively engaging with it. Everyone has used passive learning techniques before. They include listening or watching a lecture, copying out notes from a textbook or highlighting information. When you're using passive learning techniques, it can feel like you've done a lot of revision, but you need to ask yourself, how much of this information am I actually going to remember? You might spend a couple hours copying out several pages from a textbook, but are you going to remember everything that you copied out? Probably not. Realistically, your time is going to be better spent using active learning techniques, especially as the time that you have left to revise is limited and your assessments are only around the corner. Two, use active learning techniques. Active learning is where you thoroughly engage with the content you're learning, usually because you're recalling it from memory or interacting with it in different ways. Active learning can be more effective than just reading or copying out things because it's more likely to stick in your brain. A study by the Association for Psychological Science found that active learning techniques can be up to 25% more effective than reading alone, so it's definitely a good idea to incorporate some of these techniques into your revision. So, what are some examples of active learning techniques? Mind maps. Making mind maps can be a great way to expand upon information and create synoptic links between topics. You can obviously draw these by hand, but there are also great websites and apps that you can use to make mind maps with. For example, here I'm using MindMob. Flashcards. Flashcards can be used to test your knowledge of topics quickly and efficiently. There are loads of websites and apps for flashcard making, like Anki or Quizlet. These websites are great because they give you the option to revisit flashcards that you're struggling with the most which saves you time in the long run as you're dedicating more time to topics that you need to focus on and you're not going over flashcards that you're already confident with. If you prefer, you could write out your own flashcards by hand, but if you do, try not to spend too long making them. Creating your own flashcards, whether on apps or by hand, can be really beneficial for your revision, as you can focus on the specific content that you need to revise. If you're studying things like keywords or definitions, it might be a good idea to look for ready-made flashcard sets online. For example, PMT Education has loads of flashcards available on the PMT website. Make sure when you're doing flashcards, you're actually testing yourself and not just reading through them. It's a lot easier to remember information in the long run if you're frequently testing yourself. Dual coding. When you're revising, you could assign a symbol or draw a diagram associated with the content that you're learning. Studies have shown that if you assign an image to text, it can be easier to recall that information in the future. When making notes or drawing mind maps, you could draw symbols associated with the information you're learning. And then during your assessments, if you can remember the symbol, it can actually help you remember the information associated with it too. Transforming information. Another active revision technique is transforming the same information into different formats. Take a topic and summarize it into a few bullet points, then into a diagram and then into a paragraph. By changing the way that you perceive the information, it helps better prepare you for different types of exam questions. And also, it ensures you understand the content in depth, from the basic concepts to the processes involved and supporting evidence. Teaching others. Teaching your classmates will ensure you have a really firm grasp on the topic you're learning and you don't have any gaps in your knowledge. You might be less tempted to skip something or go into less detail if you know another person is going to be relying on the information that you teach them. It might be a good idea to plan and carry out a mini lesson online. Talking through information can help others and yourself with your revision, and it can also be a little bit more engaging than just revising by yourself. Three, practice exam questions. A lot of students tend to shy away from using exam questions to revise, but exam questions can be really useful for applying your knowledge to different contexts and also getting some practice on how to actually answer questions, which are obviously really important skills for your assessments. When practicing exam questions, you should always look in the mark scheme after you've written them. Look at what the perfect answer should be and rework your answer to see how you could achieve full marks. 
Don't be disheartened if you're not writing the perfect answer straight away. Instead, use any mistakes as a learning opportunity and make a note to self to focus on that area during your revision. Examplar answers and examiner's comments on past exams are also so helpful to see other ways that you can improve your answers. Examiner's comments highlight common mistakes that students make so you know what to avoid during your assessments. Four, use spaced revision. Everyone is guilty of cramming for a test the night before, but it's scientifically proven to be less effective at long-term recall of information than if you space your revision out. In fact, studies have shown that if you space your revision out and repeatedly come back to topics with breaks in between, it can improve your long-term retention of information by 200%. So make sure that you plan ahead and you repeatedly come back to the topics that you need to revise, leaving breaks in between, rather than just revising everything a couple days before your assessments. Five, make a timetable. To ensure that you're spacing out your revision effectively, make a revision timetable for the Easter holidays. Work back from your assessment deadlines to work out when you're going to revisit a topic and when you're going to leave a break in your revision. Then write these down in your timetable. A timetable is also really beneficial as it helps you keep a routine over the Easter holidays. You won't have the structure of being at school or university where you attend scheduled lessons or have online sessions. So a revision timetable outlining all the subjects that you need to revise and the days and the times that you're going to dedicate to revision can help you keep focused and motivated throughout the break. Try to incorporate the different techniques that I've mentioned in this video. Schedule in active revision sessions like mind map making or exam question practice, whatever techniques you think will be the most helpful for the topic that you're revising. Space your revision of the different topics out over your holidays. The earlier that you start to plan, the better. Make sure you schedule in breaks and activities as well, so you can relax guilt-free and still enjoy yourself over the holiday, which is just as important as your revision, if not more. All in all, everyone revises differently, so experiment with some different techniques and see what works best for you. A revision technique that your friend might swear by might not be any help for you. We all have different brains, so try some things out and see what works best for you. Best of luck with whatever assessments that you're going to be doing and make sure to have a well-earned rest over the holidays as well. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment down below with something that you've learned about revision techniques. If you'd like to see more videos like this and other educational resources, subscribe to PMT Education below.